What's up everyone, this is Moose and we are here on CTF Turbine Pro RC2 with Hein and Fixer uh, from the Syndicate and Gunrunners respectively. Today we are going to be looking at this map. Uh, same as always, uh, we're going to go ahead and start with Hein and he's going to tell us rollouts for this map. Hey, um, I guess the reason that everyone's kind of curious as to why we went from RC1 to RC2, so look up and that's why. The season or the ceiling's about I don't know a third higher for those really high juggles that always happen. Right. You know, but that's about it. So, so we will begin with the rollouts, which uh, we're going with Skull Blue. Okay. Leave Fixer behind. Let him yeah. do his thing. This is a map that's pretty good for the whip, but it's not necessary. You can you can usually win the mid without being out first. It's a matter of how you prioritize your kills. So you always want to kill the big damage doers. So the demo and the heavy, and uh, hopefully you can get a pretty easy kill on a soldier or a scout that overextend a little too far because they get a little bit greedy. So you could probably get one of those. So just roll out like normal and one thing that I like to do is send the pyro down with the engineer just to let him kind of set up his stuff and so he won't get killed really fast by the spy scout combo so some teams leave both of those down there the entire time others don't you want to go ahead and take over their stairs as quickly as you can and a lot of people call this the elbow or the banana or something like that. You could just straight up push through, but more than likely you need to try to kill as many of them as possible because they'll probably just do the same thing to you and their team will kill your NG and Pyro, you'll kill theirs, and then you kind of fight at mid or it just doesn't work out at all. So, scout. Um, I like to send scout straight through one of the doors either one just to kind of watch out for things and sometimes he can get a pretty quick uh, pretty quick cap sometimes it doesn't always happen it kind of depends on if the engineer drops his gun first or his dispenser so I recommend everyone do that and just build your gun first just in case there's too many times where we just go straight in and there's nothing there and we just take it out if you want to be fully aggressive and not just take this. You can have your medic and your heavy go left and then have your scout do this jump right here right onto the crate and kind of block because he's gonna be out there pretty quick. You want to be on this back side if you're gonna do this because as I was saying this is very aggressive and you can die very easily so you need to decide what you're trying to accomplish with this jump. Are you trying to kill people, or are you trying to just put out damage and let your scout clean up, or something like that? So if you want to kill someone, do a forward jump all the way and just focus down the medic. When you're up at this height, you're basically shooting straight down. So plan on popping the medic up and then just shoot the wall behind him so you can get an easy kill. And that's all it takes. It's very quick, it's very easy. If you want to do that also, I would say have your scout go with you instead of going for the... Hi, hi Fixer. Instead of going through the elbow way over there. And you can do a lot of damage and then you'll have your demo come out, main. And he can jump if he wants. Um, he could also jump on there. I don't really recommend putting two at one place. So he could jump like up to here on this far side and start spamming from the far side and he'll get some good spam out and he won't get hurt and he'll have the rest of his team kind of hanging out here and if you do it right it works great if you do it wrong your soldier will die your scout will die and then they'll just roll through so you gotta really know exactly what you're what you're doing and Fexer the last time you played this what was what did you generally do on your rollout um, my rollout, I, I pretty much beeline for uh, the point with Embryo or Scout. Um, if I had an easy pick going out the mid, I'd come out the uh, garage door here on the left. And I would go uh, towards Banana. 
if I had a, an easy pick, perhaps on a medic or a demo down below, I'd do it. But generally, I wanted to avoid uh, any confrontation so I can get to their flag room and meet Embryo there for perhaps a quick cap. Right, and that's a big thing that he's talking about. This is a big map, and you kind of really know how to navigate through it. So the whole point is to cap flags. Some teams will just stalemate outside and just kind of hold mid and never cap. And then their team can get in with a scout and a spy, and they can pull it out and cap. And that could win them the round if you're not, if you're not pushing the whole time. You always want to push. You never want to stagnate. Um, so we've got, we've got the scout kind of a few options for him. Your sniper does whatever he wants. There's so many different places. He could hide back at main. He could go either side of the deck. He could go up the banana and shoot out that, which is probably not that smart at the very start. But later on, it's very smart. Just kind of let him do his thing. Uh, make sure he has Jurati, because he can throw it from way back here over the side. And he can just get all of them covered in sweet, sweet Jurati. And... They can't really do a whole lot about it, and if your your soldiers jump in and your demo's spamming, you can really do a ton of damage. So adversely, you've got to watch out for them throwing Jurati. So maybe have your pyro looking for that if you want to send your pyro out with you, and you can air blast back rockets and stickies and Jurati, all that kind of fun stuff. If you do that, you're leaving your engineer alone. So there's there's pluses and minuses with everything that you do. So kind of set it up however you want there's a lot of different ways to play this map and there's a lot of wrong ways and it's a little more difficult than some people really think it is because they just think it's just stalemate and you stand around and wrangle the gun yeah that's that gotcha oh yeah so that's okay i'll just keep kind of naming off classes we've done the scout we've done the sniper we've done the soldier We've done the demo, pretty much. You can just be really aggressive with demo. It's a lot of fun. Just spam. Just spam. Medic and heavy, you always want to stay together. If you want to do this banana push, that's perfectly fine. And you can just hold this area. Or you could swoop around this way and try to cut them off so you, so they can't get out. Out, of sound Canadian. So uh, they can't get out. And then you have other people pushing the front side and get a good sandwich going. But always, your heavy wants to be with your medic. At all times, pretty much. If your heavy dies, your medic wants to be less aggressive and just hold for a minute. Because if you try to push without your heavy, it, it really doesn't work that well for the most part. It kind of depends on the skill level of the team you're fighting. Um, another alternative, which we were kind of doing these earlier for Soldier, is at the very start, have him go through the tunnel, have him whip out a few people going high so he can keep going fast, and then once he gets here, he can do a double straight over and behind him. Or uh, the one I was really practicing was off of this door or right off of this door right here. And the good thing about that is that you can do it when their sniper is up and you won't really peek at all. So you'll come out and you'll just instantly go and then you're all the way over. You can do it from both both doors. Whichever side the sniper's on is the side you want to do it on because you want to get in his face immediately. And what Moose and I found earlier is you can rocket jump from right off of this all the way to the other side with the original. It's a, it's a kind of a slower jump because you're just using one and you might get picked out of the air, but you can't do it with a sticky jumper. Well, we- Rocket jumper. Uh, we couldn't, yeah, rocket jumper, sorry. Yeah, you can definitely do it with a sticky jumper. But with the rocket jumper, for some reason, it it barely, it's barely too short. You can just hit it and fall straight down. But that's a really fun one to do if you have a really good jumping soldier. And it's a lot of fun, I enjoy it. Demo can do the same thing, he can just jump up high, and then you've kind of split their attention. And that's always good. If you have your team knowing exactly what you're doing, you can just kind of focus on killing while they're focused on deflecting attention and putting out damage. And you can wipe them, pretty much, if you, obviously if you do it right. Um, pyro, 
Either he stays in the flag room, or he stays with the medic, and just reflects things away. He can do a lot of work at mid, because there's so much going on at once. This is one of the few maps where you're just instantly right with the other team, and you, you have to face them, because there's nowhere else to go. And uh, Fixer gave an alternative for what the spy usually does. There's a lot of different things he could do. He could push straight in, like Fixer does, or he could be more combat, like I think, hey, I don't want to quote him if he doesn't do this, but, um, or Kessel, I think Kessel definitely did this. He would stay out at mid, and he would go just, for kills immediately. Just sniping. Yeah, just shooting people, backstabbing whoever he could, getting the combo, go out the top, and then expect them to go up here. And then maybe go for stair stabs or trick stabs, get him behind here, uncloak on the health, and then just come straight up. A lot of teams do that because it's such turmoil. The spy can be a big pain at this mid. Especially if, if they're really good at face stabs and side stabs, because you can't do a whole lot to stop that. So if your spy's good at that, by all means, use him in whichever way you really want to. Diversity is fun. Engineer, he's just gonna build up at last. We'll go over some some good gun spots. There's there's really good gun spots and then there's really bad gun spots because you can't rely on the Wrangler to do all your work. So you want to get it in a spot where it's not easy to take down and it basically they have to pop an Uber or they have to bonk in or sap or whatever you know teamwork. So that's kind of mid. Right. That's that is if you win mid. And correct me if I'm wrong, but if you can hold mid, you basically have won. If you can maintain that hold on mid, they can't get past. I mean, there's no way they're capping. Yeah. So yeah, mid tough. should be your first priority. The, obviously, the point is to get the is to get the uh, intel, but mm -hmm. having mid definitely helps a lot. If you hold mid, you want to push, but you also want to maintain your hold on that mid. You don't want everybody to go in and then just lose it because then they're just going to counter push and they're going to obviously they just wiped you out and then you lost mid so leave the demo or leave a scout roaming around or just something that can be there to say hey they're coming this way and your engineer knows what to look for or your sniper obviously your sniper is probably not going to move in too far except maybe in the banana Right, this is this is one thing uh, I do as spy. Basically, on this map as spy, I'm everybody's bitch. I, I do things to help other people uh, get the job done. And what we usually do is we'll have our sniper looking on the flag here, and I'll stand over here and opening the door for him. Yeah, and you got to watch out for that because we've we've played this a few seasons in a row now because everybody seems to love it. And what'll happen is their sniper will be all the way back in there and you can only see his head if your medic is here healing like you can see me pretty well but i can't see you i can barely see you so right. um if you're gonna do that kind of door hold make sure your medic knows because i've had this happen a few times where i'll be back here kind of building making sure everybody's healed up um checking for spies and then someone opens the door and i get sniped and it's the most infuriating thing ever, so make sure your medic knows that you're going to open the door for him. Even if the sniper says, hey, open the door for me, check with your medic first, or make sure everyone's watching. Because you don't want to drop a heavy or your medic just because your sniper wanted a kill. Greedy bastards. Right. But you want to watch out for this. There's a lot of sticky spots. They fixed this, it looks like. Because in the past, you could hide stickies up in there, and it wasn't clipped. So it looks like it's fixed, but you still want to watch for stickies up high on the walls. On the back side of this is really big. There's a lot of little stupid spots. And I think they fixed some of the other clipping things that were back here. There's like an alarm bell that you could put it in. I don't remember, but if you're going to push this way, it's very tough. Because you're coming out of a little door, you can get spammed really easy by their demo. So you might want to fork your push, have some go high through the tunnel, have some go through main, and just go through it. 
the medic generally probably wants to go main more often than not. So if that's the case, he needs to watch for stickies on the bell, on the back side of this wall, where the scorch marks are. Any any corner that you go around. Right here is a big one. Right there. And right here. So whoever is being pocketed at the time, they need to be your spy checker. You need to watch through this window. It's a really great tool. You can see who's in there, where's the gun sometimes. Say, oh, they're on the right side, they're on the left side. And watch, watch and see if they're watching you. That's another big one, because on defense, you know they're going to be looking through there, and they're just going to see you. And they're like, oh, hey, they're pushing in now. Get ready. Yeah, yeah. Get your turn. So know, know your enemy. And make sure you see them. A new addition is this right here. It was in the B1 edition, and I think it was crates that time, but it seems like it has been added, and that's going to change quite a bit how this is played. Because in the past, the only way most classes could get up here was with a teleporter set right there, or there was, there was a glitch jump right here that you could do. It seems like they fixed it, or jump on this little thing, which I think is also fixed. So they fixed both of those and they added this in. That's going to mean that that's going to now be an escape route for pretty much every class that needs it. And it's a way for the, the defense to also chase. Because another thing, scouts would come in or soldiers would go and they would rocket jump up and they would just be gone. And no one could really chase them. They just kind of shoot at them. But now they can chase. Or they could try to cut you off through here. Possibly. It could work. It depends on the situation, but you gotta watch out for that. It's a big thing now. And your push on here needs to be very calculated. As I say in every movie, and I'll consent you to say it, the first thing that your heavy needs to shoot at is the pyro. Because the pyro will ruin your uber if you allow him to. So, focus him down, make their medic pop the uber on the pyro, and then everyone else kind of has a free game on shooting everything because the pyro getting ubered is going to focus on your uber getting wasted and he's not going to be able to do too much damage to anybody else and if he does that means he's he well he's just basically going to focus on the, the combo that's how it always works so have everybody else push in at the same time from high or the other door and kill everything else that's not being hit, and um, <clears throat> and that'll work. It always works. Wrangler is not very effective on this map. Some teams will see that it is because they aren't being assertive in their pushes. So once that pyro's down, the demo man's main job, his only job to me, is to kill the gun. While that uber's being focused, while it's being wrangled, it can only shoot one person at a time. So, focus it down, quick. Kill the kill the engineer. Kill the gun. Doesn't take too much. If you got a soldier and a demo both shooting it, it's gonna go down almost instantly. And it's pretty beautiful. This space back here is also newly renovated. They took down the little gate that was sitting here, the little, uh, word. Rail. We'll call it a rail. Right. So you can put guns here. This will give you higher vision up there. When before it was right here, you'd basically already be on top of it and could shoot it really easily. But now they can see you and they can shoot that whole back wall with rockets and wrangle up there and just see it really easy. So watch out for that because it's a big deal. And it's a pretty good spot. I'd say put it right here. Not so much over here because it'd be really easy to get picked from the one way. Well, I guess it's not a one way, but the door back there. So right in the middle of the room is really good. It'll watch all the doors. It'll give you good vision. You want both doors watched and up high. It'll also watch over there, which is good. So watch out for that. That's one, one good spot. The other one that I've seen is right back here. The flaw with it is they basically have the whole flag room they can push in and then just spam it from right here 
but hopefully your defense is there, and that's going to be how you defend it. You're not relying on just the gun. It's more of a bait to get them to push in and pop the Uber really late. The other one I've seen is right here, which is okay, and that's going to make it where they can't shoot it from up high very easily unless they show themselves completely. And if they pop in, they can't really do a whole lot of work. It's kind of hard to peek because they're fully visible here as well. I lost you. Mm -hmm. here. I was looking at that gun spot from up top. Ah, right. The other one is here, right here in the dead center. They, they can't really peek it from here because they're fully visible on both sides. They can't get it from up here, and they can't really get it from the stairs very easily. This is more of a forward hold, and it also works pretty well. All these gun spots can work incredibly well. Uh, another spot is right here, where I'm at, and you can wrangle it all the way through the front door, or you could put it right here so that it does this. If you're going to do that, you got to watch out for spies, because you're going to be looking up here, and you got 10, 15 feet of spy zone. And it's, uh... It's very common for engineers to get backstabbed, but I think engineers should generally not get backstabbed unless they're wrangling. And then at that point, if he's wrangling, someone needs to be kind of giving him a helping hand. But that's your, that's your push. And you want to kill as much as you can. If you don't want to do a full-on push, say your team is comfortable with just holding that mid and you want to send in some suicide teams, one that works out pretty well is the soldier coming from up here. Rocket jumping down, and then rocket jumping straight back out. It's just like it was in Vitalism. It's a little bit longer, so what you could do is have your spy say, I'm sapping right now. He starts to sap, soldier RJ's in, a little lower, not like that, and then he's out. Or he does this jump right here. And just having a double, he's already all the way to here. And the gun didn't have to go down, the engineer can't focus him at all, and he's gone. There's nothing he can do about it. And he, and that team is basically relying on their team being outside to stop him and cut him off. Same goes for Scout. Scout's a little bit slower, but it works just as well. Make sure your soldier is not using the sticky jump, or the, the rocket jumper, because he can't grab the flag with it. So it's, it would be really fun, but it's, you know, it's one of those things. I think it would be awesome to allow them to, because they can't kill anything. I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this around then. Um, so you lose mid. Okay. And uh, now you're trying to hold your engineer. Happen to get a gun up on last, but you guys are respawning coming back through. I would go down here for the most part, depending on what classes. Where are you? Actually, I don't know why I was switching sides. I'm sorry. I'm still yeah, here. We'll just, do a, we'll just do a push out. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, cat. Yeah, all right. Uh, you would want to have everyone come down the stairs, reestablish yourselves in the flag room, get a few people up top since it's so easy to do now, and get some stickies up over there. Make your spy, your scout, or someone go through the tunnel. Make sure that they're not pushing that way. And if you get any kind of picks, or you get Uber before they do somehow, because they've just held so long, you can push out on them. This is not one of those maps where if you fail an Uber, you're definitely going to lose. Because you should never wipe when you push like that. What should happen is you pop your Uber... You heal as many people as you can, spread it out if you need to. If you get a lot of kills, great, you stay. But your medic needs to make a decision at about the 40% mark whether he needs to stay or leave. I generally leave at about the 20% mark because it gives me enough time usually to get around a wall and get away. And I can survive. And you want your, your heavy to also be able to do that with you. Or your pyro or someone that's that can defend you, not a sniper or an engineer, someone that's that can put out some damage. So you always want to get out. And if you do that, and your team also does it, you can scatter, and once their Uber's over, you can re-push on them. Re 
just redo the whole thing all over again. And it should make it where you can get 10 fairly quickly. Kind of depends how even the teams are. We've played this quite a bit, and usually we will... Well, I think we've always capped out on it. We've got nine points usually the first round, and then the last round, we just get it as soon as we can. We've done it with uh, Bonus and Ranch. I think there's a few different ones. And it's always really good matches. Or scrims. I don't know if we've played Bonus on this as a match, but... Try to play teams that are even with you, because... Say you put your gun right where Moose is at, and you've got your engineer back here whacking away at it, and their team just can't get by it, and you think, man, this is the best gun spot ever. But the other team's not very good, and they're not very coordinated. If you play a good team, they're just going to roll around the corner and kill it, or they'll do the soldier jump down into the flag room from up high, and you don't even have to touch the gun. So think about the level you're playing at and who you're playing. So if you're, if you're steel, I would say scrim silver teams. If you're silver, play platinum. If you're platinum, play top platinum. Always try to excel. Always try to do things differently, change things up. Weird strats can work really well. Like a lot of pyros now are playing in sixes full time a little bit. And it's changing things. It's really fun. It's not always effective, but, you know, people are learning stuff, and it's pretty cool. So just change it up. Switch it around. Change who you Uber in. Maybe Uber in your pyro and try to clean them up, or Uber in your, uh, your scout. There's a lot of stuff you can do. It's a good time. So when you're pushing out, you need to, again, watch for stickies because they're probably going to be everywhere. Push out the banana or push out main. If you push out main, you want someone to already be out here just saying, hey, they're here. As long as they don't put a mini sentry or a level 3 out here, your soldier, sniper, and scout can pretty much roam here at all times. It's kind of uncanny how the mid is empty after a certain bit of time, and they can just go around and flank and clean up. If, if you call out that they're in the banana, your scout can go out the main door, circle all the way around in behind them, and drop the mid. Because a lot of people won't turn around, so you have to remember to turn around and look. Because I know people like Fixer love that kind of stuff. Yeah, when people yeah. are all looking the same way. Well, if I'm watching him come up here, knowing that they're going to go banana, I just decloak right here and get them. Uh, but right here, this is one of my favorite spots. Just wait for him to walk right by me. Decloak here and just right behind him. Mm -hmm. So remember that. Remember the back caps. Watch out for the sneaky classes, the scout and the spy. Your engineer needs to be vocal on this map. If he's getting hurt at all, someone needs to go back and help him out or always keep the pyro back with him using the power jack, I think it is, or the home wrecker. home wrecker. So he can knock off sappers, and it's great. It, it's really frustrating, and it's awesome. Very frustrating. Anything that can hurt the spy, I love. Huzzah! So you pushed mid, and you got it. You're no longer on the back foot, and you're in control. We're kind of back to how we were, because it's really not that complicated once you get out here. And you just kind of roll over. And you just switch over from the defensive mode back into offensive mode. You want to make sure that they can't get a push out. So maybe sticky up high or sticky this door. Get your combo on that left side where they can avoid sniper from pretty much all positions. And we'll do another door check for snipers. So. If you can get a majority of the doors where you can't get sniped, you're doing well. So, how many doors can I get sniped from from this spot as snipe as a as a medic? There's there's a possible chance from up here. So you need to stand right here where I'm at right now. You could possibly get sniped through the stair from way down there, and that means that they are all the way peeking out. I'll go down there if you want to stay up where the medic is. He would have to be all the way right here to get you, and they will, they'll do it. I remember Bot did it to me a few times, and Napalm's done it as well quite a bit. All This whole thing you can shoot through as a sniper. So they'll just line their dot up, and they'll wait for you to run into it, and then just pop your head off. 
So, that being the case, you need to make sure that someone is spamming this door. And obviously they're not going to get you from here because your team's all there. And down there's a big one. So that means you probably could get sniped from two out of the four doors. If you're, if you're paying attention or your team is doing the right thing, then you shouldn't ever. If that's the one that you're really worried about, have your, have your demo sticky it up. Have something over there, just watching the stairs so they can't do anything. Um, you need to plan exactly what you're going to do. You need to say, okay, so-and-so, you need to do this, and you need to focus on this. So your soldier goes high, your scout goes high, bonks in, your spy goes from the respawn. Everyone needs to know exactly what they're going to do. So once you get in there, it's not just mayhem. Everyone needs to really understand their jobs and their roles. And that makes calling really easy. And you can name these plays. Just say, all right, this is the soldier jump. And everyone knows soldier's going high, scout's going high, spies go and respawn. Or you say, okay, we're going to do the scout play. Where the scout goes high, he bonks in, everyone pushes in through the main door. So all I have to say is a play name, and they'll all do it. The other big one is when you're doing this kind of formation where you're splitting up your team, you need to make sure everyone knows when to push in. Sometimes you need to delay one of those other ones so that it can work. Like, if you want your main to push in, you want your soldier up top to wait. Or if you want your spy to go in and sap, everyone else needs to wait before he calls it. So it's like a delayed push a little bit. So you can say, okay, so-and-so, you push at this time, and then everyone else push at this time. So they just look up at the clock, say, okay, it's 15 minutes in. I need you to push in at 5.15. Everyone else push in at 5.20. Try not to make it where it's 30 seconds away or a minute away, because then you're just kind of standing around, stagnating. That's the best way to coordinate a push, in my eyes. And I think Syndicate is getting better at it and looking handsome obviously was really good at it because it was so difficult to beat us and we just knew exactly what we wanted to do and if you ever had a bad push don't get mad don't point fingers don't blame people things happen just say okay this is what happened you got killed by this class next time you need to watch out for that class or someone else needs to be watching that class so you can do your job it, once you start pointing fingers, it's really tough to focus and pay attention. So you need your leader or someone that's really positive to just kind of be an upper for the for the team. Just say, don't worry about it. We got this. Just go ahead and keep going, and we'll, we'll make it through it. The next push, we're going to do it. And generally with that positive attitude and, and the DM skill, obviously, you'll be able to do it. With a coordinated push, anything can happen. Even if it's a bad call, and I've, I've had some bad calls in the past, if you make a bad call and you push in at the wrong time, but everyone's coordinated and they do their job, it works out. It can still work out very well, and people that are watching don't know that it was an accident. They just say, man, that was really well coordinated. It was at a weird time, but maybe they were just being aggressive. Congratulations, Rainbow Dash. You got something special. I don't have those notifications on. Lucky. Turn you don't get to, get to see the love. But that's about it for the pushes. I think it's very important. And that's not just a capture the flag thing. That's every single map. You can use that kind of strategy and style. And you can do a lot of work. So what would you add, Fixer? What, From your perspective, when you're not just pushing, say your whole team is back in your base... You don't have Uber, you're at like 20%, they've got Uber or crits. Let's say they've got crits. What would your main focus be? Who would you coordinate with? Would you go for the flag to pull them back, or would you go for the attack? Man, I've been trying to get my team to go with the naming the plays thing, and they're they're like, it's too serial. Killing me. Um, yeah, well, what, what I would probably do is... um. Uh, cause uh, a little bit of trouble over at the flag room to try to pull them back. Um, use Embryo. Embryo and I work really well on this map. If we just want to capture the flag or if we want to just 
cause enough trouble for them to pull perhaps the pyro and the soldier back into the flag room. That's usually what we would do. Yeah, I don't like that. And we also need to point this out. You can still go under here. And it is pretty cool. So watch out for spies going under there. Watch out for everything going under there. It's pretty sneaky. Spies and scouts both are really good at hiding down there. But if I were really looking to to um, grab their attention, uh, if, they, if they're just holding mid, uh, Dead Ringer, I would go Dead Ringer and, and start uh, harassing and annoying. That, that usually draws enough attention to perhaps get a pick or two from my other guys. Alright, so that's... I think that's pretty good. That's... it works. When you pull away, it's like back capping in sixes. If their team is pushing in, like, they're just starting their push, but you go all the way around them and you start capping, they're gonna have to turn around, and they're not gonna be able to focus. So I think that's genius. And it works. Except for that jump. That was pretty awful. <laughs> and when you have someone like Embryo, I don't have to do anything but sap and let him do all the work. Yep, Embryo is very, very wonderful. His stream is also really funny. Let's review mechanics Thanks. real quick. Um, you can't cap with either of the jumpers, right? So you can't just have a demo, super fast, sticky jump with the jumper Correct. in, right? Uh, yes. how, how long are respawns on this map? Do you know off the top of your head? Do you want to find I'm out? I'm going to guess 15 seconds. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not going to kill myself by KD ratio. How long? I'm ready up. Uh, any other mechanics Four, you can think of with this three, map? Just uh. Two, one. Or have seven or nine caps. I thought it was ten. For half. Unless we changed it. Uh, I don't know about halves. Let's get them. Twenty minutes. 20 minutes? That's not cool. Oh, I got an overdose. There you go. It is 15 seconds. 15 seconds, okay. Correct. Okay, cool. Alright, anything else? Any uh, last thoughts about this either yet? Or we just well, good? For me, um, generally, my, my two primary objectives when I play Spy on this map, um, one is to sap the sentry for whoever's going in there, whether it's an Uber or Embryo, the Scout, whatever. Um, the other... Um, job I have is refreshing the intel. If the intel makes it anywhere in the Z or anywhere else, if the intel needs refreshing, it's a suicide mission for me, basically. This is easily the map that I die most on. It's suicide mission after suicide mission. But refreshing that, that intel, uh, it can just buy enough time to get your team over there to get, grab it. Yeah, I forgot about that too. If uh, if you guys don't quite make it, um, send your spy in real quick just to decloak and grab the intel before it resets all the way back to their spawn, giving you, you guys how long does it take for an intel reset? It's quite a while. Let's find out. Wasn't it reduced recently? Was it? Probably. Be nice. But yeah, it, I mean, there's been times where I've refreshed it six or seven times in a row. Just refresh, refresh, refresh. Uh, until my team can get out there and grab it. Right. Kill yourself. Well, that's not nice. LOL. Alright, so like, 18.05, 15 second respawn. And you can definitely get back out by that time. Pretty sure, yeah. unless they totally change it in RC2. It is currently at... The, da, 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 da. Here's the halfway mark. Right. Now. And this is a timer, guys. If you don't know that, this little thing above it isn't just a weird symbol. It's the timer for how long it's got. Oh, wow. I've been playing this game for two years. I've never noticed that. <laughs> yeah. And you can see that now that I'm pointing at it. You see the timer moving down on it. Sexy. Wow, okay. Yeehaw. So how long is that? That's a, a one minute timer looks like. Uh... Something like that. The 
Yeah, it's a one minute time, so you got tons of time to dive in it. You're you're gonna have to watch out for the engineer because he's gonna build outside and try to block, and you're gonna watch out for stickies and pyro. Do some tandem jumps. I really like it when you get your demo to jump in as well. And while he's coming in, he lands and instantly jumps back out. He's just got it. As he's landing, he's already shot his sticky. So he just lands and he's instantly gone. That works really well. Soldier can do the same thing. Spy obviously can just kind of refresh it over and over. It works. It works out. You can jump forever on this map. There's so much room. Especially with the ceilings. <laughs> yeah, it's a good jump map. Enjoy it. Them jump let's map do, skills. Uh, um, okay. Let's do a Blitzkrieg real quick. Yeah, let's do a quick Blitzkrieg. I'll just explain it because I don't want to do it. So what you'll do is you'll have your scout go straight to the spawn, or straight to their flag room. Your spy gets there as quick as he can. If they're building a gun up or it's already level 1, you have your scout just kind of wait, say, hey, they're building up, just wait. So your, your spy goes straight in. He doesn't wait for anything. He just uncloaks. He doesn't care if the engineer sees him. Uh, well, he, he, also, he also wants to sap. He doesn't want to die. So he needs to make sure that he can get there and sap it. And while that's going on, your soldier's getting there as quick as he can, doing his jumps. And he can be very fast, so he's there as a backup. And your spy's sitting there, he's harassing the engineer. If they've got a pyro, that's going to take a little more coordination. It's okay if your spy dies, but you need to make sure that right as you sap it, your scout comes in and kills the pyro. So then you can kind of focus and maybe the spy can go get the health over there or leech it off the dispenser. It might not be built yet because it's so fast. And... Once your soldier's there, if everything's already cleaned up, he goes ahead and he circles over here and he takes over this area. They're going to pull back people either by the main way or by here. So he needs to watch that and if they come in really hot, he just gets out and waits. And once the engineer comes back, he kills them. That being said, um, you want to take over the mid with the rest of your team. And at this point, you can basically chain cap over and over and over. And you can take over their flag room. Once the gun's down, it's like priority number one for the most part for the spy. Keep the gun down as much as you can and allow your scout just to run cap. Make sure you've got the bind for dropping the flag. It's very, <laughs> it's very important because if your heavy picks it up, you don't want him just to kill himself and you don't want a four minute cap time. I think by default that it's L, but some people unbind that or change it, so... Yeah, see, I've got a problem because mine is usually R, but when I'm not playing Capture the Flag, it's my permission to land denied bind. So there have been times where we'll be in a match, and I'll pick up the flag, and I'll hit the bind, and be like, uh, I'm dumb. <laughs> so I have to go bind it. Make sure you know what it is as well. It's drop item, or drop items... One or the other, so if you forget to bind it, you can just bind it really fast. Just go in the console and type bind space, whatever letter, and then whatever the command is, drop item or drop items, and it'll instantly fix. It's very good to know. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to make sure drop yeah. item is it. But that's really about it for turbine, um, unless you guys can think of anything else. Um, I could talk a lot about this map. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but I don't think we really need an hour long one for this we one. Have taken, we have dropped the enemy intelligence. Yeah, it looks like L or uh, drop item was correct. We have taken the enemy intelligence. So one thing I will bring up, we have had a request from the Asia division to see if we can get closed captioning because they love watching these. Shout out to you guys. It's really awesome that you're you're with us now. But they can't always understand what we're saying because we're fast speaking Americans. And I think they they really enjoy these a lot, so let's see how hard it is to get closed captioning going. I don't know if that's even possible. Does YouTube automatically do that? I'm not sure. I mean, I could try to transcript what we're basically saying and translate or something. Google okay. Translate, that is. But if anyone would that, like yeah. to help and uh, closed caption these, that would be 
way, way, way appreciated. Especially if you're fluent in, in both and um, uh, English and, and and a Asian language. I'm not even fluent in English. What am I doing? I think the annotations <laughs> work out uh, really well in the description. So right. we, we go through each class, each right. push, each hold, whatever. That also helps people split it up really easily. The enemy right. intelligence hey, hey. Jerk. One last pimp out before we leave. Uh, Monochromatic Bunny has started a petition. We're going to try to get colorblind mode actually working in TF2. So there is a petition that's going around. It's on Reddit, Steam Forum, UGC Forum, Team Fortress TV Forum. Last I checked, it was over 500 signatures already in like four days. So hopefully it's it's a lot higher now. But I think that would be very helpful to a lot of people. Even if you're not colorblind or only see black and white like Bunny, it, it would be helpful because sometimes it's really not that easy to see classes. Like watch Volcano, both teams look red. Yeah, could you imagine seeing in grayscale in a room like this? Like, I've got you up against the coloring of that, uh, that area. Your pants are the same blue as the dark blue at the bottom, and your coat's the same blue at the top. It would be impossible for someone to see in grayscale who you <laughs> like are. Like a chameleon. Right, so, um, that's one of the causes that UGC's picked up on recently. If you haven't signed that petition, just, just do it. It's real easy, and, uh, And help, you don't have to put your name. Out. You can keep that hidden, just... Fill everything else out, and you will remain anonymous, but you'll still be helping out a lot. It's good times. I think that's all I got. Flick, sure you got any shoutouts? Ah, oh, no, no, I don't. Besides my team, GR. Rock on. Moon Runers. Well, that sounds good to me, guys. This is Moose, and obviously I'm going to put all those links in the description. Uh, try to get this up ASAP. And uh, we will always be around forums, comments, anywhere. Uh, same as usual, if you've got questions, we'll answer them. Um, hit us up. Don't be afraid to. Moose signing out.